Today's episode is with thanks to Squarespace.com. Hello cave dwellers, welcome into the cave as we continue our build of our dream retro computer, console, gaming, hands-on computing, everything, our dream space for retro. We've come so far and we're making good progress this week. It's about 6 a.m. right now, so I'm sorry if I'm a bit bleary-eyed off the back of a really busy week working on this build, but I've got some great things to show you and a really exciting project which I hope is going to drive us to the finish of this build and get us open Fingers crossed by the end of September, it's gonna be a big push, but with your help, I think we can do it. Anyway, let's pick up where we left off last time. And that's in the hands-on exhibition space, which we're going to add some more desks to. I promise, these are the last desks. You've seen a lot of them being built over the last few months. And I won't go into great detail on the process because we have covered it, but of course it involved joining the tabletops together Here's Dean and I working on that now. And really interestingly, the price of these tabletops has doubled since January. Just across the board, the price of anything that's wood, uh, cement, raw materials, it's all shot up since January and um, it's affected us here. Uh, luckily, we're able to get over that hurdle because we've just got the two more to build, but it does mean that all of the tabletops we've built so far have probably appreciated in value just because of the cost of the wood alone. We then built the scaffold frame to put the tabletops on and routed out the space for the knuckles in the scaffold so that the desk would sit flush across the whole scaffold. And as the backs of these desks are visible, we've added a board across the back and that's just to hide those cable trays underneath the desks so that people don't see the cables hanging loose. I think I will stain this wood down so it's a bit more in keeping with the tabletops but you get the idea of what we're trying to achieve here and I think it looks pretty good even before we've stained it. There's a hole for the plugs to go in and then a slot at the top so that you can slide the cables along and position everything exactly where you want while keeping those cables nice and neat. And with everything put together and a few systems on top, this is what the exhibition space looks like now. It's really closed the space off and made it feel a bit more cosy, but I think even more inviting. There's a gap in the middle, which encourages you to walk through to what will be the museum and the uh, studio space. And it gives us space for about six more computers or consoles. Bringing the total hands-on systems that we can get out and have usable on the benches to about 18 or 20 systems in total. And given our capacity on any open session here will be about 30 people to stay within the fire regulations and allow for staff as well. There will be moments when you'll be outnumbered by computers. It will be more than a one-to-one -one here, computers to people. So you're not gonna have any problems whatsoever getting hands-on with the systems. And I really like that. Nobody wants to queue up to use a, a Spectrum or an Amstrad or a Commodore 64. You just wanna get straight on there and play. So that's a really good result. You'll also notice that there's another arcade machine in the corner there. Not quite sure about its final positioning because it is going to obstruct the desk to the left of it, but we'll figure it out. And this is something that I've resisted for a long time. It's a MAME arcade cabinet. So there is a PC in there. This is not an original arcade cabinet. Now I resisted having arcade cabinets that weren't original in here for as long as I could. We've got the beautiful original Galaxian cabinet in here. But my mind was changed when I had some friends pop in to visit. Gary and Andrew and Chrissy, um, and Rob as well. Hi guys. They came in to uh, play on the systems and they had great fun and they gave me some really valuable feedback. But there was one point where two of them said, we want to play Street Fighter. I didn't have the Super Nintendo set up. I didn't have the Sharp 68000 set up. So they potted around and they dug out the Pandora, that really horrible Pandora joystick that I reviewed a while back with Mark. And they set it up and they had fun playing Street Fighter. And I thought, we can't have this. We can't have people coming to visit to use a Pandora joystick. So for convenience, I caved and um, we got this arcade machine in where it's got thousands of games on and you can just pop up Street Fighter if you want to and play it without the slowdown of the Pandora or any other game that's in there. Admittedly, it's quite an old PC in there. It does need some updating. We might replace it with a Pi. We might replace it with an FPGA solution. I don't know. We'll, we'll do an episode on that. But for convenience, it's there now. Of course, if I ever get around to opening the secret arcade area, they will all be original arcades. But for now, I think it's fine to have that multi-arcade machine emulator there for people to walk up to and use. 
and the keen eyed amongst you will notice that the exhibition space has actually got smaller. That's not just because the tables are in there, I actually ripped up a line of the flooring and just brought everything back in a little bit just to give a bit more space to flow around it and um, I don't think we've lost anything in doing that. I think in making it a little bit cosier, it feels even better and even more inviting. So um, smaller is better sometimes. And a couple of other loose ends before we move into an all new area, which we've built. Um, a ballast light is now working over here. Just a little nice touch to go next to the R here. And um, back in the tabletop library area over here, we used some leftover cladding from the walls that we built just to tie the room together and to stop people from being able to see down the back of the bookcases there where we've got the RGB lighting. It just closes that off nicely and uh, ties everything together. So that's our progress on the exhibition space and a few loose odds and ends that we've done. And next we're gonna talk about a whole new area which has only really been used to store boxes in so far and we're going to really sort it out and that's the library area but just before we do i just want to talk about how we've been able to afford some of those big bookcases and other furniture in the cave over the last coming months it is of course with huge thanks to the official cave dwellers the patrons thank you to each and every one of you but you'll have also have noticed if you're watching the public videos which have adverts in sponsorship slots from the likes of squarespace and um I had an agreement with them for four adverts. The fourth one will appear today on the public video. And every penny that's come in for that has gone into furniture. And we've bought some amazing furniture, some of which you're going to see later on today. You're not going to want to miss this. In fact, you probably saw it at the very beginning of this show. I gave you a teaser of those drawers. There's lots more to come um, where that came from. And that's all thanks to the sponsors. So all of those 30 second or 45 second adverts that pop up, hopefully you're finding they're, they're well worth it. Um, I know some of you aren't keen on adverts, but they directly go into the building of this place. That agreement comes to the, an end after today. Speaking of which, here is today's sponsored message from Squarespace. If you need a website, then why not try Squarespace? Squarespace make it easy to create an online presence with their library of templates to get you started, all of which can be customized to the extreme to suit the image of you and your business. Or maybe it's for a personal website, sharing your collection of big box games perhaps. You can make a shop, a blog, a gallery of retro machines, whatever you want to create for your audience. You can do it for 14 days free when you visit squarespace.com forward slash RMC. And if you make a purchase, you can enjoy 10% off using the code RMC. Thank you Squarespace for supporting the cave. Yes, a big thank you to Squarespace for their support of the cave. Hopefully we can work together sometime and um, even more can go into progressing the build. Now, let's get over to the library and let's show you exactly what we've built over there. So the first thing we needed in our library was bookshelves, of course, and I went back to my furniture dealer, Mark. The link to his furniture is in the video description because I highly recommend him. And uh, he sourced me some bookcases which are pretty much the same as the tabletop library, but they're more uniform. The pigeonholes are much more suitable for storing magazines in an orderly fashion. So, six bookcases all the way up to the top of the mill. So if I look like I'm melting, that's why. We did hit 31 degrees C last week, which is pretty hot for here in the UK, and that will bring us on to another problem, which we'll talk about a bit later, which is heat in the cave. But for now, here's the library. Here are the bookcases going in. And with the bookcases in, it gave me a chance to finally dig out all of my magazines. Now, I don't think I'm going to immediately fill up the library with my magazines. This is a space that we can grow into and we can be selective about what we want to put in here. I did, surprisingly, have more magazines than I thought. We have gone some way in filling up the library space. There's a lot of great magazines in here, including some recent donations, which I must give huge thanks to Rob to Dale and to Chris for sending their contributions in. Uh, and they include things like the CNVG or Computer and Video Games magazine. Here I am unboxing them. Some of them even have the hologram stickers still attached, but the style of them, the art, the way the articles are written, they really do capture the era perfectly. I think they're fantastic little time capsules. At the other end of the quality scale in terms of glossiness is Edge Magazine and we've received a huge number of Edge Magazines going all the way back to issue one, some of them in binders, and they sit really proudly 
on the shelves here. I think a lot of people will get to enjoy those, all in fantastic condition. And we've also received a lot of Retro Gamer magazine. Now, I'm a subscriber to Retro Gamer magazine, but I just bought them sporadically going way back. It's only in more recent years that I've been a consistent subscriber, so it's great to be able to fill in the gaps of the collection. Not only have we filled the gaps, we go all the way back to issue one, and we've got a load of binders with them as well. It's getting on to be retro in itself. We also took delivery of some Nintendo Power magazines from the US. Uh, interestingly, the US magazines are in a different format to what I'm used to in the UK. You'll see here that they're slightly smaller overall. So you can see we've got lots of room to grow into this space and we can be selective about what we add to it. I, in particular, would like to add lots of Amstrad Action magazine, uh, Crash magazine, Your Sinclair. We really need to fill that ZX Spectrum gap. Haven't got many of those magazines. ST format, because I've got a ton of Amiga format, but we need to fill in the ST format gap. You will notice it is a little bit dark in the library. We do need to get some lighting up here. I don't want to fill it with RGB lighting here because there's a lot of that in other parts of the cave. So we'll, we'll just keep the library a little bit classier than that. And I've just got some crates in the corner at the moment for what would be the entrance to the secret arcade if we reach that 2000 patrons level and we can open that. So that's just a stop gap for now. We'll find something a bit more attractive to put in there, but I think it works. We've got a table there. We obviously need more chairs so people can pull magazines off and sit down and read through them. And then on the opposite side, there's this 70s sideboard, which was left in the cave when we moved in. And I've just put some bits and bobs on top of there. There's a modern screen, which is my streaming and podcast PC, which is tucked away in there. So ignore that. That will go on visitor days. But I think maybe we could set up the Atari 2600 or a Pong console with this black and white TV and people can have a quiet game there as well. We will need to put some clear perspex on the back of the handheld library so stuff doesn't fall through on top of you. Oh, and those bookcases in the handheld library have all been secured to each other and to the wall now, so there's no danger of those falling over. Good progress overall then. If we step back into the exhibition space and just look across, we can see the handheld library and the magazine library. And I just think it looks really quite inviting now. Next then we can head into the studio backdrop and the area that's to become more of the museum piece. And this is where things get really, really expensive because We've got all of these wooden bookshelves, um, the wooden tables and the scaffold and the apple crates in the background in the studio. And to contrast all of that in the museum space, I've decided the best idea will be to have glass cabinets. Glass cabinets coming out from the walls at 90 degree angles so that you can look at artifacts in there from both sides. These will be the rare and super expensive artifacts or items that are on loan that we just can't have people handling in fear of them um, being damaged. So we want to get these glass cabinets. They, of course, need to have UV filtering. They need to have some nice subtle lighting in there so you can see the objects, you know, real proper museum stuff. And that is not cheap. We need, I think, at least six cabinets in here. They want to be on wheels, so we've got the flexibility as to where we want to put them, flat against the wall, sticking out in the middle of the room. And um, I got to thinking about all of this way back in January and thinking that there's going to come a point where there are some purchases that we need to make that can't just be done on a monthly basis. It's gonna need a big pot of cash. And to try and mitigate that, I came up with an idea with artist Stu Cambridge, formerly of Sensible Software. And that idea, bear with me, is a retro computer coloring book. Here are three pages that Stu and I have come up with together. This is how the book will look. There will be 30 systems in total. I really love the way he's come up with this because uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of beige in the computer world, so we've included peripherals, we've included fun backdrops, and we will be actively encouraging you to paint that Amiga 500 pink, paint that ZX Spectrum blue, um, just go wild. And every book will come with a digital copy, so you can print off as many pages as you like and colour them in. I really hope that it captures people's imagination, and if you want to back this book, it's a Kickstarter by the way, it's a crowdfunder, so we've got to hit a minimum value to cover Stu's fees, to cover the production fees, and then anything above that will be profit that is just all of it will be ploughed into the big drive to finish off this space. So 
I really hope it captures your imagination. And if you're interested, click the link in the video description and in the pinned comment to go to the Kickstarter page right now. And not only will you get a cool coloring book, you're playing a huge part in helping us to build this. So thank you to everyone who goes and does that now. So into the exhibition and studio space we go. And you may be wondering what kinds of things would I put in those glass cabinets if we get that far? Well, here's an example of some items which are loaned to me from Gary Pinkett. Thank you, Gary. And these are some really rare exotic items. We've got lots of sharp X68000 games. One we're all familiar with here, SimCity on the Sharp X68000. I love the boxes that these come in. There's also a lot of the productivity applications in here because the X68K was more than just a games machine. It was a, it was a graphical powerhouse and a workstation. And there's lots of applications that take advantage of that. We've got a hand scanner in here. And then there's a bunch of PC Engine stuff um, and all kinds of things in here which are boxed and in mint condition. And I think people would love to see these and I think showcasing them in a glass cabinet would make them look even more exciting and exotic. So these are the perfect kind of items that we would put on display. And of course, in addition to that, we need to fund security cameras and something that I didn't really think about until the last couple of weeks was air conditioning because we hit 31 degrees. We had a heat wave here in the UK and I think another one is forecast in the near future. And it was hot. It was hot, hot, hot in here for just me. So imagine if we've got 30 bodies in here, it's going to get really, really hot. And so by the time this place is built and ready to open, we will be heading into the winter in the UK. So it's not an immediate concern, but by next summer, we will need some air conditioning units in here. And um, of course, I'd like to do that properly. I don't want them to be the mobile units that wheel around and get knocked over and get in the way. Uh, we've got a flat roof just outside where we could put the external units and pump in um, the air conditioning. So hopefully we can get to a point where we can keep this place nice and cool as well. And maintaining a consistent temperature is ideal for the machines and the display items as well. So that's another thing that the um, colouring book will hopefully go towards funding. Finally, into the main studio space, because I think a lot of people will want to come and see that backdrop because it's become such a part of the channel now. The, the studio backdrop, the apple crates, the items on it, they're a character in themselves. But you'll notice it's changed. Slap bang in the middle, you'll see a, what almost looks like an altar to retro with a couple of um, Commodore pets on there. And what this piece of furniture is, is architect's plan drawers. They are uh, made to accommodate documents which are A0 in size. So they're huge drawers. I know it's a bit of a change to our normal wraparound set, and it does introduce some negative space with the wall behind. But I love the way the RGB bounces off the wall. And also I'm going to put a little poster up there just to even things out. So that will close up the negative space a little bit. However, these drawers, what am I going to do with them? Well, I'm going to encourage people to open them as well as other things around the museum, like taking the magazines off the shelves and taking the handhelds off. I want you to open the drawers and see what's in there. And what's in this top drawer and the drawer below it are a 100% complete set of Codemasters games. These are budget games which were released in the UK for £1.99, £2.99, so pocket money games that we were all of a certain age very, very familiar with. This is the ZX Spectrum collection, and I just think these drawers are perfect for displaying cassette tapes. You open it up and you're just hit by a wave of nostalgia. And I want to repeat that eight times on every single drawer. We could get about 800 tapes in here. So Amstrad's, um, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, VIC-20, Dragon 32, MSX, all of those systems. I've got loads and loads of cassette tape games and I just want to spread them all out in these drawers. Some of them will be hands-on, you can take the cassettes out. Some of them, like the Codemasters collection, which belongs to Gary, will put some clear perspex over to protect them. Uh, because uh, one of the games in here, in particular, this one, DJ Puff, it's quite a rare one which people need to complete their collection and it goes for well over £100 just for that cassette tape. But yeah, I think it's a really, really fun piece of furniture and I hope you enjoy it too. There's one more piece of furniture that I got hold of this month and that is over here between the exhibition space and the hands-on area and it's this sideboard. It's got a huge 32-inch CRT widescreen television on there from 2001. That was kindly donated to the cave by Alex, so thank you very much, Alex. I went over to Wales to pick that up. It only just fit into my car, and I've got a big car. <laughs> and the idea of this piece of furniture with all of those little windows in the drawers is to make it something of a console corner. 
Haven't figured out how I'm gonna do this yet, whether I'm gonna put all of the consoles in the drawers and you can open them up, take a controller out and press a switching box on the top to switch to that console, or if we'll put games in the drawers, if we're gonna light up the drawers with RGB lighting. Haven't got my head around it yet because I've only just got a hold of the furniture, but as a piece, I think it's perfect. I think it's got a lot of potential to achieve that console corner thing. I'm not sure if we'll get a sofa to sit in front of it or a couple of bar stools like I'm sat on here now for people to sit on and play games. We'll figure it out. I think it's got great potential and um, it's gonna be nice to have more of a dedicated console area. And of course, we'll get lots of console games around there for people to take off the shelves and have a look at. So fret not console fans, I've got you covered for a session on some consoles here. And this TV looks fabulous. I've tried it out with the PlayStation 2 and uh, the game of Gran Turismo. It just looked amazing. Here are some more shots then of the cave, just to give you a, an idea of the space, of the size of it, of how you might flow around it. It really, really is coming together. I'm so pleased with the progress we've made. And uh, that final push, that final push for the museum piece, it's going to finish this place off beautifully. And I'm really excited now. Every, I mean, I already was, but when I come in that front door and I see it now, I'm like, a, I'm like a child. And I saw this in Rob's face. You saw Rob when I was setting up the library area there, he appeared. And um, when we were putting the magazines on shelves, it was really nice to see him grab certain magazines and go, oh, I remember this one. I think it was Dragon 32 magazine he was looking at. Uh, I remember this one at school. And just to see his face light up and uh, to go down that nostalgia hole that's what I want to see each and every person do that comes in here. I want to see them turn into a, an eight-year-old and get really, really excited. And I think we're really nailing that. We really are. And if we can just get over that final hurdle, that final push to raise the funds with the colouring book to build that museum area, this place is going to be nothing short of phenomenal and I cannot wait. If you'd like to help out, please follow the link in the video description or in the pinned comment to go and back the colouring book Get yourself a copy and enjoy being a part of building this cave. You are just as important an element in making this happen as anything else that you've seen today or anything that I can do myself. This would not happen without your support. Thank you, everyone. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.